The problem is secondary air injection. And the real problem is it's going to cost you $6,000 to repair it on this 745 with an N62 engine. This car has 116,000 miles and that's typically where we start to see this problem. So here, as usual, all German Auto has a solution to make the $6,000 problem a lot smaller with the use of our new secondary air injection cleaning kit. So here's the kit, the ATA N62 secondary air injection. And the kit consists of the special made tube that is uh, conformed to fit into the engine with the engine installed in the car still. And then a cleaning brush that is attached to a flexible cable so it can be fed through the tube like this and go into the air passage inside the cylinder head and clean it while it is in the car. The kit also has a brush and a spare brush for here that you will need later on. And a funnel that we will show you how it comes into use later. So in this particular case, what we have, if you're using a BMW factory scan tool, is code 170, which is a secondary air injection low flow. If you're using a generic scan tool, then that will be a code P0491, and that is for bank one, which is cylinder number one through four. If you have the same code, but for bank two, it will be a P0492, which will be for bank two, which is cylinder number five through eight. And just so we're clear, bank one is the right side of the car, cylinder number one through four. Bank two is the left side of the car, cylinder number five through eight. So this code is caused when the airflow from the secondary air injection pump does not reach into the exhaust system because the system is blocked. And therefore, the O2 sensors before they kill the converter doesn't register a dip in mixture, and that's ultimately what sets the code. And that results in the check engine light coming on. We have removed an N62 engine from a car, so we can better show you this procedure. The air comes in from the secondary air injection pump to this hose and into this hard line where it splits off. The air comes in to the emission control valve, which is a one-way valve, passes through this aluminum tube and into the cylinder head. This is where the restriction is, and that's what we're gonna clean out. Of course, you can do this with the engine in the car. We just have it out so we can show you. Here we have the emission control valve. And as you can see on the primary side where the air comes in, it's perfectly clean. And on the secondary side, where that's connected to the exhaust, that it has a lot of carbon buildup and debris in the valve. Now, if your vehicle has over 100,000 miles, as a rule, I'll recommend to replace this valve during this cleaning because the diaphragm gets stiff and will also restrict the airflow into the cylinder head. The second part we have is the air tube. You can see the carbon buildup here up by where the valve is mounted. And then you can see how severe the carbon buildup is down here on this end where it is connected to the cylinder head. So here we're cleaning this part with a carburetor cleaner and taking the brush from the kit and pushing it through the pipe. And you can just kind of maneuver it around and it'll go the entire way through the pipe. It takes a little bit of effort, but it certainly scrubs the debris out of the pipe. After using the brush through the pipe from both sides, you can see how the carbon is removed on both ends and the part is clean. And now onto the engine. Here we have removed the left and right side microfilter and the little cowl in front of the firewall. So here on the engine, with the valve and the tube removed, we insert this special tool into the back of the head like this. So here on the engine that we have out of the car, so we can show you, you can see how you insert the tube into the hole and make sure it goes all the way into where the o-ring is seated. Then you take the funnel and insert it into the special tool. Once you have the tool inserted to the cylinder head, step one is to spray the carburetor cleaner into the engine like this. And in this case right here, you can see how the, the hole is restricted 
and the carburetor cleaner is not flowing through because it's actually building up in the funnel. So leave it like this for about 20 to 30 minutes. So while this is soaking, we're going to remove the ignition coils from the car and the spark plugs. It's important that you remove the spark plugs from the engine so that you don't stand the chance of hydro-locking the engine with the fluid going into the cylinder. So now we've had the carburetor cleaner soak in here, down through the special tool and into the galley right here. And the cleaner has been sitting in this port and soaking into each individual exhaust port where the passage is up through this like that. On this next step, we remove the funnel and uh, very important, put on safety glasses because you will get some spray back up and use a rubber tip uh, air blower with compressed air and blow into the engine. And usually you'll hear like a pop from some of the galleys cleaning up and you'll start to see some debris coming out. Obviously here you'll see it in the car, you'll just hear it as air starting to flow through. At this point you need to hold with your hand the tube into the galley because it's sealed off with the o-ring right here. You can also hear when you're on the air that the air will be passing out of one of the cylinders, whichever one the exhaust valve is opening. The next step is to thoroughly clean this galley out by using this brush. So remove the tool, insert the brush, like so, reinsert it into the hole and all the way in to make sure the o-ring is seated. At this point, if you choose and if your drill has a small truck, you can reinsert the funnel and that kind of helps guide the cable or you can leave it off. It helps the cleaning action faster if you again at this point spray some more cleaner into the system. So here, by coming in and out, with the cable and the brush. See it takes us a little bit of pressure. You can see that in the beginning it takes a lot of effort to kind of work through the area and the galley to really get it cleaned out. And this feeds the brush into all the little passage holes. This procedure is going to take a little while but just keep going in and out. And make sure that you reach the bottom and you can kind of feel that by the cable bunching up. So now that the second step is completed, you can go ahead and pull the tool back out. So the final step here, after you have the brush out, is to spray a little bit more fresh cleaner into uh, the galley and blow it out with compressed air. Now you can hear the passages are clean and air is coming out of the cylinders and you also hear the air passing out to the tailpipe of the car. At this point we recommend that you, before you reassemble, turn the engine over with the spark plugs out so in case you have any fluid in the cylinders that it comes out so you can't hydro lock the engine. So now that we have the air passages in the cylinder head cleaned, the code reset, when we take this car out and drive it, the first time it runs the monitors and the secondary air injection is on, it will not reset the check engine light. This took this from an extremely expensive repair down to a fraction of the cost by the use of a very simple kit made by All German Auto. This kit can be bought at All German Auto. If you go to allgermanauto.com, You'll find this on our webpage under the product section. Like the other products that we sell, this is a very inexpensive solution to a very expensive problem. The first time you use this kit, it will more than make its money back. This applies to all the N62 engines, not just the ones in the 7 series, the 6s, the 5s, the X5s, and so on. Thanks for watching this video. If you go to YouTube and All German Auto, you'll find all our other videos that we have on most of the products that we make.